I'm Justin Slegel with Brine Research and Engineering. This video series is going to walk us through oil and gas production from the well to the production facility to the compressor station and finally to the gas processing facility. So let's start at the beginning. A well stream typically has three parts to it. It has an oil, a gas, and water. So let's model it. I have Promax open right now. It's a blank project starting from scratch. What I'm going to do is bring in a process stream and another process stream and a third process stream here. I'll zoom in so you can see. This is gonna be my gas, my oil, and my water. And then I'm going to bring in a mixer and pull in my gas and my oil and my water into that mixer. I'm going to send that over to another stream. And this one is actually going to be my well stream. That's going to go to my production separator, which is typically going to be a three phase separator where I'm going to have my gas production coming off of here. I'm going to have my oil production coming off the side here. And I'm going to have my water coming out the bottom. So far, this is just a nice, pretty picture. But what we're going to do now is we're going to actually have it calculate the thermodynamics for us. That happens over here with our environment. I'm going to click on active environment. This here, when I'm looking at my property package, is pretty much the brains of the operation. This is going to tell it how to think. I'm going to choose Peng Robinson here. And then I'm going to go to my components. I'm going to add in C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. I'm going to bring in my water and CO2. But one thing that you may notice is missing here are my oils. When you have a lab analysis from a particular lab, they're typically going to give you a uh, mole percentage for your C1 through C6 and then give you something like a C7 plus. And one C7 plus is not necessarily going to be the same as another C7 plus. So in those cases, we need to create it because one well is gonna have a different C7 plus from another well. So there's one more thing I need to do in that environment, but first I'm going to go create two oils. I'm gonna create an oil for my gas, and I'm gonna create an oil for my oil. So this is gonna be my gas C7 plus, I'm just going to make up a molecular weight right now and a specific gravity. Both of these are going to get replaced later. Say OK. I'm going to create another one. This will be oil C7 plus. I'm going to give this one a molecular weight as well and a specific gravity. Click OK. I'm going to close this and now I'm going to go back to my environment. Well, inside my environment, I'm going to have all the components I added in there, plus these two that I just created. So I'm just going to double click on each of those and now they're added to my environment. So I'll click OK here. And now I'll go over to my gas, my oil and my water to specify those properties. I'm going to double click on my gas here. It doesn't matter too much what I give my temperature and my pressure here, and I'll get to that in a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and say 100 degrees 
and 1,000 PSIG. I'll say that this is 1 million standard cubic feet per day of production. And then I'll go over to my composition, double click inside this grid here, and I can specify it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a specification here. I'm going to go ahead and say 85% there. Let's say 14% there, and then 0.1 for all these other ones. And so I get down to my gas C7 plus. So this is the gas, the C7 plus for my gas. I'm going to go ahead and put that at 0.6. Point six there, click OK. So now I'm going to go close this one and go to my oil. Double click on my oil and I'll give that some properties as well. Temperature, pressure, flow rate, and composition are all required. So I'm going to change this from gallons per minute to barrels per day. And I'll say I have 100 barrels per day of production of oil. I'll go to my composition, double click in here, and I'll go ahead and give this some values in here too. So I'll go ahead and say this is 1.3, and then this will be maybe 30, and then I'll be left down here with my oil C7 plus. I'll go ahead and give that one 68. I'll do that on a mole fraction basis and click OK. Then I have my water that's left here and I'll double click on my water, give it a temperature and pressure, and I will give it a flow rate. Go ahead and say this one is also 100 barrels per day of production. And then I have my composition and double click in there, go to mole fraction, and I will say this is 100% water. I can close this and I can see now that I am, I can click execute flow sheet and I can see it's all completely solved up until you get to my test separator here. Well, my test separator is actually where I have my meters. I'll have my temperature, I'll have a pressure there, so I'll have instruments for those, and then I'll have meters or potentially some meters for my gas flow, my oil flow, and my water flow. So this is actually what I care about. I want these to be the ones that control the system. So for my stream one here, I want to give that one both a temperature and a pressure. In order to give it a temperature, I'm also going to need to put in an energy stream. So I have an energy stream going into my separator here. So then in stream one, I will double click on it and I will give it a temperature. Let's go and say it's 120. Uh, this will just be whatever the thermal couple says. And then I'll have a pressure gauge as well, and I'll just go off of whatever that is as well. I'll close that, execute this, and now I have my model. But it's not quite where I want it to be yet. I want it to be 1 million standard cubic feet per day of gas production and 100 barrels per day of production of both my oil and my water. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my gas flow here until I get to exactly 1 million standard cubic feet per day of gas production in stream one. So let's look at what our production rate is in stream one. I'll double click on it, go down here to standard vapor volumetric flow and I can see that it's 0 0.98. Well, I'm going to right click on that one now. I'm going to copy that to my clipboard. I'll close this. I'll go over to my gas double click on my gas, go to properties and wherever my flow rate is on this gas, I'm going to right click on it and go to create quick solver. Inside of here, I'm going to click select. I'm going to go to my clipboard because that's where I copied it to. I'm going to call this one gas. Click add and I'll put it in a target of one. I can name this my gas solver. I will close this. And then I will go down here to 
my oil and do the same thing. I'll double click on my oil over here, change my units from gallons per minute to barrels per day. And I can see that at, that of course is not 100 barrels per day of production. So I'm gonna right click on that, copy that moniker to my clipboard, and then I'll go over to my oil, double click there, go to where I specified my flow rate and right click, go to create quick solver, select my measured variable, go to my clipboard, name this one oil, click add, put in my target of 100. And now I have that one in there too. I can click execute flow sheet now. And you'll see that this blinks through lots of times. And now hopefully I should have 1 million standing cubic feet per day of, of gas production. And sure enough, I do. And I should have 100 barrels per day of oil production. You can check that one. And sure enough, I do. And then I have one last one to do, which is my water. I will double click on my water stream coming out the bottom of my test separator. Double click on it. Change that to barrels per day. I can see I'm pretty close, but I'm not quite there. I will right click on it. Go to copy moniker. Now I'll double click on my water. Go to properties. Right click on that flow rate. Go to create quick solver. Now find my measured variable, which I copied to my clipboard. I will call this one water. Click add, give it a target of 100. I can name this one water solver. And I can close this. Now I can execute my flow sheet. It should all be solved now. And the last thing I want to do is pull in a call out and show exactly what my production rate is. Standard liquid volumetric flow, probably only need about three significant figures. And I'm going to deselect some of these here just to make it a little bit cleaner on my flow sheet. Click OK. Sure enough, I have 100 barrels per day here. And I will copy this. And I will show that I have 100 barrels per day here. And I copied it again. But of course, I don't want a liquid flow rate for my gas. So I'm going to double click on that one. Delete my standard liquid volumetric flow. And instead, I'm going to go to standard vapor volumetric flow. Change those sig figs as well. Click OK. And so now you can see that I have exactly the flow rates that I want. And this here is your model of your test separator.